Empires on the run. Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network. Hi folks, Alex Jones here with some important information. I want to tell you about Matt Redhawk and his team of patriots over at My Patriot Supply. Several years ago, Matt was sitting in his two-bedroom apartment, frustrated with the direction this country was headed, and the charlatans willing to sell us out for a quick buck. Deciding to take action, a company run by Patriots for Patriots was born. My Patriot Supply has never taken a loan or accepted outside funding. They now operate two distribution facilities and employ over 50 hardworking American men and women. It is rare to find companies who practice what they preach. And that's why I stock my pantry with high-quality storable foods from My Patriot Supply. Go to MyPatriotSupply.com forward slash Alex today for special offers on emergency food storage or call their preparedness specialist at 866-229-0927. That's 866-229-0927. Do business with someone who shares your values. MyPatriotSupply.com slash Alex. General, what do you think about the FBI saying that there's a terror alert on Monday about a potential Fort Hood situation? The police are shoving people, shoving Alex, shoving the crowd. Here we go, folks. I'm being assaulted. Whether it's the radio show, the news websites, documentary films, or the nightly news, InfoWars is the tip of the spear. Is this another false flag stage attack to take our civil liberties and put more homeland security while sticking their hands down on the pants on the streets? It's up to us to set brush fires in the minds of men and women everywhere. And that's what PrisonPlanet.tv is designed to do. You watch the Assad regime is going to be blamed or accused of using chemical weapons against the so-called rebels. What we see now is a war against reality. It's a war against the truth. It's more vital than ever that supporters of freedom become members of PrisonPlanet.tv and share their membership with up to 11 friends and family. Visit InfoWarsNews.com today. Become a member, share your membership, and help take the InfoWar to the next level. I don't know what it is. Ralph just won't pay any attention to me. When he comes home from work, all he ever does is play video games and go to sleep. It's like I don't even exist. Oh, Betty, that's just awful. Does this seem familiar? If the answer to this question is yes, then listen carefully. Toxic pesticides, GMO foods and additives, BPA plastics, contaminated water supplies. Many of these toxic additives are deliberately engineered to attack and weaken human masculinity. It's part of the eugenics population control movement. Look it up. If men are more interested in online gaming than they are in their wives. A serious population crisis is soon to follow. Energize the man in your life with super male vitality from InfoWarsLife.com. It's designed to aid the body in ways that help invigorate your natural systems without artificial testosterone, completely free of GMOs, harmful additives, gluten, and is made right here in the USA. Get your super male vitality right now at InfoWarsLife.com or call 1-888-253-3139. Live from Austin, Texas, broadcasting worldwide, it's Alex Jones. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight here in Austin, and joining me from the UK are Paul Joseph Watson and Richie Allen of the People's Voice Internet News Channel. Now, when we were in Copenhagen, we didn't have time to go sightseeing, but one of the things that I would have loved to have seen, maybe I'll go back someday and see it, is Kronborg Castle. Now, this was the site of Shakespeare's Hamlet, also known as Elsinore Castle. Now, according to legend, this statue that we opened up with, if you're watching this, uh, according to legend, kind of a King Arthur type of myth, this was a Danish king called Holger the Dane. They say that uh, he returned to rescue France after things were happening in England, then traveled to Kronborg Castle, where he sleeps until he is needed to save his homeland. I... I bought that statue because I think the Danish people, as well as the people of all of Europe, of North America, and of Asia, need to wake up to what's happening with these globalist plans. What is going to be happening with the Trans-Pacific Partnership, with the Transatlantic Partnership? This is something that goes back to 1973 when they started the Council on Foreign Relations. Now we see this mirrored in these new trade partnership agreements that are essentially going to elevate multinational corporations and banks to the level of the nation states in order to destroy the nation states. That was the stated purpose of uh, these commissions, of these globalist groups like the Bilderberg Group, the Trilateral Commission. 
Uh, Richie Allen, what do you think about the uh, importance of waking people up to the Trans-Pacific, Transatlantic Partnerships? Is there much awareness of it in the UK? There's not much awareness of the Trans-Pacific Partnership and the Transatlantic Partnership here in America. No, David, there isn't. Um, and without Infowars, and without the People's Voice um, TV, um, there, there would be very little awareness of it. Um, here's an agreement it, being sold to people as a way to bring about fair trade and to help um, um, developing economies and bringing develop, developing economies into the fold and having a one size fits all agreement that's fair to, to every country. But here's an agreement that I believe Joseph Stiglitz and Paul Krugman, two well-known economists, have said basically only serves the interests of the wealthiest. And you mentioned earlier on, and I heard Alex talking earlier on in the, in the broadcast, about the provisions there for corporations to, in fact, sue governments when they don't like what governments are doing. Um, I don't know if you know this, you probably will. Maybe some of your viewers won't know. Um, but this was put to the, uh, in a big poll in New Zealand, it was put to the uh, New Zealanders back in 2012. I'm sure Paul will know this. And they were asked to um, give an opinion as to whether they thought it was a good thing that corporations could sue um, democratically elected governments, uh, no surprise, 64%, nearly two thirds of um, New Zealand said, no, it's not a good idea. I'll tell you what I think it is, David. And I'm new compared to, you know, you guys and Alex, I'm, I'm pretty new. I, I worked in the mainstream media for a long time. Um, and it's only really been the last four or five years um, that I kind of came out and had a good look at what was going on and what was being reported and what was not being reported and why. Um, so, so maybe my analysis is going to be a little bit immature, maybe. Um, but I'm going to say this. It seems to me that um, corporations are, are out to do nothing other than privatise every square inch of land on this planet. Yes. And whatever they have to do to bring that about, they'll, they'll go and do it. Now, the I, I won't rant on too much because Paul wants to get in. But I was thinking today, I come from Ireland, obviously, you're probably saying, tell me another one, you obviously know I'm Irish, <laughs> um, with this accent, this outrageous accent that I have. Sounds um, great. I'm from, I, I'm from Waterford in Ireland. We, my country's been decimated by the IMF and the European Union. Yeah. Decimated. Um, we've lost our, um, our uh, the electricity supply board there. We've lost the forestry. We've had to give pretty much all of our state assets to the IMF to pay back debts that we really didn't have. And what that makes me think, and I'd love to hear Paul's uh, opinion on this, David, what do they need these agreements for? What more do they need to do? They're doing it already anyway. Governments right. have been um, completely taken over by corporations anyway. So why the need for these bloody agreements? I don't get it. I really but, don't. That's right. Uh, yeah, Paul, the uh, European Union was something that that uh, Davignon bragged about the fact, uh, a chairman of Bilderberg, bragged about the fact that they created the idea for the European Union as well as the Euro in just their second meeting uh, 59 years ago. This was the 60th anniversary of the Bilderberg Group meeting. So what do you think, uh, what do you think they need? They want to have every last bit of private property on the planet, don't they? Well, yeah, this TTIP is, a, is another pillar of world government and it's about taking away any shred of representative nation state government in America or Europe. I mean, look at the people who are behind this TTIP. Jose Manuel Barroso, Herman Van Rompuy, both key Bilderberg luminaries. The guy running it from the US side is Obama's US trade representative, Michael Froman, CFR member, Wall Street insider. This is a guy who made out like a bandit uh, in his position as Citigroup managing director back in 2008 during the economic crisis. So this is a kind of world company. It's about joining Europe and America together under a pillar of world government. It's being called the economic NATO. And just as the European Union began as a free trade area and is now a political federation, basically, where in some countries upwards of 50 percent or more of laws are dictated, are created, implemented on orders of the EU with no nation state representative democracy whatsoever. That's the plan now for America. And that's how they're trying to get it done through creating this world company via the Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership Agreement. So that's what it's about, because Froman is also behind the Trans-Pacific Partnership, which is the America-Asian Union. So they're still intent on building this world government, which they uh, plan to have in place by the year 2000. It's being derailed again and again. They're still pursuing it 
feverishly, and this TTIP is part of that centralization of power into fewer and fewer hands. You know, it, it, it echoes not just the goals of these globalist groups like the Trilateral Commission, like the Bilderberg Group, but it also echoes their operational methods because the Trans-Pacific Partnership is being negotiated by corporations without even any input from the democratic, democratically elected uh, people of the nations that are going to be affected by that. U.S. senators are not allowed to see what's going on in this trade agreement. What we know for sure about it are really just echoes and leaks like we get from the Bilderberg uh, group. So it's essentially having the public completely shut out of any information about this. Absolutely no openness, no transparency, no disclosure. We only know things for sure that we've seen from it that have been leaked by WikiLeaks. And so we know that it goes beyond just economics. We've got real issues of taking over control of the Internet. Uh, we've got, as, as democratic countries have rejected CISPA, SOPA, ACTA, PIPA, we now see that these guys are going to enact this through the back door where they can essentially shut down any Internet site just with an accusation of copyright laws. And, of course, it's also going to affect the way people get their medicine, where they're going to extend out the copyright uh, terms for these pharmaceutical companies, even if it violates national law because these partnership agreements would take precedent over it. And to make it clear, when they have these arbitration sessions that would happen, this would put the corporations, just the multinational corporations, mind you, not local corporations within a, a country, but only the ones that are multinational corporations, they would have equal status in these arbitration schemes to sovereign nation states. Uh, Paul, uh, well, let's go go to Richie Allen. Uh, Richie, what do you uh, what do you think about that? Give us your take yeah, on it. You couldn't argue with a single thing you've said. Um, but 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 I repeat again, and I'm sorry if I'm boring you, but it's it's a case of overkill, really. We're covering a story on the People's Voice that you guys are interested in as well, and it's about an Australian farmer called Steve Marsh, who sued his neighbour for cross contaminating his crop with GM crops. Steve is an organic yes. farmer in Australia. This guy next door to him is growing GM canola. And um, so, of course, Steve lost his organic certification. In other words, the government said, Steve, you're not an organic farmer anymore because you've got, you've got this stuff in your, in your crop. So, of course, that's not good for Steve because organic crops cost a little bit more. They cost a bit more to cultivate, but they also make more of a profit. So he's, he's, he's lost out on a, on, on, a, on, a, on a few dollars. So, of course, he sues, um, as he would do, the, um, the um, next door neighbor, the, the, the nearby farmer. Um, and he loses. And this is extraordinary. The government who took the um, organic certification away from him basically said to him, nobody's responsible for you losing your organic certification. And to make matters worse then, his neighbor who uh, was sued by Steve was bankrolled uh, to the tune of God knows uh, how much money by Monsanto for the court case. And I believe, and I can't name them, uh, David, but I believe that senior um, agricultural ministers in Australia have gone on the record in the last few days to say they're absolutely delighted with the decision. So I say again, why the need for this bloody um, new agreement? Because what they want to do with it, they're doing already anyway. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, well, here in the U.S., we had the Supreme Court nine to nothing have a similar case where uh, it was a farmer whose uh, product was cross contaminated by that, and nine to nothing they sided with Monsanto, saying that he had to pay them because they had yeah. contaminated his product. We see as people are fully awake in many areas of Europe that they can then jam this down their throats what they could not get through democratically. That's why people need to wake up to the Trans-Pacific Partnership, the Transatlantic Partnerships that are being done there. These things are being negotiated in secret, just as they are at Bilderberg. We've seen for a long time that the globalist agenda was to have regional consolidation, like NAFTA, like the EU, then to combine Europe to America to Asia for world governance, for world domination by these corporations. Paul, what do you think about I think they're basically trying to plug the leaks in the agenda because yes. they keep trying to implement this and it just keeps leaking again and again. I mean, look at the recent resistance in the Euro elections. I mean, a lot of those parties have policies that I don't agree with. But the fact that in places like Denmark, France and the UK and other countries, um, they were dealt a huge blow by these anti-globalist, anti-EU parties 
um, in the Euro elections. I mean, that's got them panicked. We know Bilderberg were panicked about that. They leaked the agenda beforehand. They said they were going to be discussing that. So as, as the push gets stronger and stronger,